I do meet a lot of people who get very angry about this. People feel that they're almost being um, made a fool of because they're, they're looking at something and, oh, anyone could have done that. But what we've always expected about art is that it's traditional. We're looking at the artist's skill. How did they represent what we're seeing in the world on a piece of canvas or in a sculpture? And you have to stop thinking of that and think, well, what's the idea behind it? What's actually going on in the world or uh, the environment of the artist politically, economically, socially, environmentally? And, and think from that point of view. So often it's, it's not necessarily, well, very rarely these days, the skill. There are some artists who are still working and, and concentrating on skill. But skill has almost been sidelined for the philosophy behind the art. So. It's very simply arranged. It can't be completely chronological because um, there aren't such things really as a, a, a set art movements anymore. Art is moving in all different directions. So it's much easier to put it thematically. So there are certain themes such as objects and toys or expressions and scribbles. And the, the book is in these sections. They're chrono the artwork is chronological inside those. But the spreads are very simply done. They're, very visually done. At the beginning of each section we have this wonderful double page spread that shows you the scale which I find really important. There are so many um, books that uh, they might say the measurements but they don't actually say the scale so you've got the silhouettes of each work of art in that section in its scale and then the pages work. You have the work of art and you have chunks of text that explain for example this is why your five-year-old could not have done that. This is what the materials were that the artist used. This is an introduction to the movement or the time that the art was being made. This is all about the artist and the artwork and um, different things about influence, materials they've used and other works of art you can go and see that are similar. You can do it either way, actually. I think you, it'd be quite interesting to read it from beginning to end, um, but it, also it's possible to, to dip in and out. I don't think you won't lose anything from dipping in and out or, or thinking, oh, I've seen something like that, let me see where this is and see where it leads to mm -hmm. and what happened before and after. So I, I think it's quite flexible.